Circuit Break was released in October 2017. This set introduced the Altergeist archetype, a series of spellcasters with a heavy emphasis on trap cards and control. Notable cards in this set include Akashic Magician, Baguska, the Terribly Tired Taper, Borlo Dragon, Destrudo, the Lost Dragon's Frisian, and one of the greatest equalizers in modern Yu-Gi-Oh that makes players quake with fear every time they end the battle phase evenly matched. In this series, both Nim Nim and myself will be opening 24 booster packs or one box of a core Yu-Gi-Oh booster set. We will build a deck and play a best two out of three, and the winner will receive a small prize to upgrade their deck. However, in each episode, we will open another box of the next set that was released moving in chronological order, constantly upgrading our decks before dueling each other at the end of each episode. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh progression series. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code CMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. Welcome back, everybody. Feels good to be in the winner's circle once again. Very convincing when I think we built our deck a lot better to deal with the masterpiece, which did come down, although he wasn't as mighty as he could have been. Still able to navigate the matchup pretty easily. Those black wings, bro, they do not stand the test of time. Hopefully, Alex switches up his strategy this time around. But in the meantime, we actually did make a big change moving into the link era here. We realized as we started to get later down the line that the wheel was very off balance. The three tournament packs felt way better to get sometimes than the wild card common rare, or even nowadays since there's a super in every pack, the super. So we feel like the wheel needed some much needed rebalancing, and now the wheel just consists of wild cards of all the different rarities, but you have a larger chance to be able to get the ones like secret rares or ultra rares. So that means now we've actually put it at a choice, where you can actually just take your three tournament packs, walk away and be okay, or you can spin the wheel for your chance to get something from last set that maybe you wanted but didn't get the chance to get in your packs. Altogether, I think it's a much welcome change. Code of the Duels wasn't that strong of a set, so I am going to end up just taking the three tournament packs today and those tournament packs are actually still OTS 5 which is one of the weaker OTSs. We'll see what we can pick up from them. I think Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit's like the only big thing you can grab. Like see look at this is all stuff we literally already have just maybe boosted or degraded rarities there. Number two. Look at that another lost win bro. And the last pack here, anything big, bro, anything in the close. Disciples, like, literally nothing good, yeah. This was not a good tournament pack, I'll say it. Venus back in the day, pretty good for Firewall Dragon combos. Right, so not much to say on the OTS line. Let's let Alex tell you all about Circuit Break. Okay, so last episode may not have been my best work, but I look at it this way. A lot of you are upset with me with playing Blackwing, but imagine how many of you would be upset if Gage lost to Blackwing this late into the progression series. So I thought we'd give it a shot, and to be fair, that game one actually wasn't that bad, but yeah, it just kind of went downhill from there. But in any case, we're in the loser circle. We are now moving on to Circuit Break. Circuit Break is actually a set I love because it released Spiral Double Helix, which is one of my favorite archetypes. The rest of the set, though, is a bit hit or miss. We got a pretty relevant card in the form of Goki Headbat that was pretty necessary for the Goki strategy. A lot of the Rocket cards first debuted in this set as well, and also the Altergeist archetype, one archetype that would actually go on to be very popular in the metagame. And for progression standards, it's doable but again, it needs a lot of work for it to happen. The crawlers are actually in here at almost all common, so I guess technically that could be an archetype, but I don't know how good that archetype is. We also have the metaphys, which are also fairly low rarity, but I think crawler would be even easier to assemble. And then we start getting to some of the actual one-off cards. Cards like Amano Iwato, right? Just an absolute staple in True Draco at the time, and Destrudo the Lost Dragon's Frisian. This is a very ban-worthy card. I am looking to pick it up, though, because we could make some use of this thanks to the fact that we have Yazi. But once we get to the link, monsters are where things really start to pick up. Borlo Dragon is an absolute insane link for that both Gage and I would love to have. This would be one of just like the best cards we could get out of the set in all honesty. Some other cards that are more archetype specific, but once we get down here, Akashic Magician is also an interesting one, but maybe a little bit more specific. I think Borlo's a little bit better. Miss Starboy scares me. Gage is already on Paleo, and Miss Starboy is the generic water link too, similar to Mrs. 
is Radiant, and Gage might be very incentivized to want to keep playing Paleo, knowing this is in the set. And then continuing on along, we've got some Rocket spells and traps, some Altergeist spells and traps. What I really want to get to is Evenly Match. There is going to be a lot of bluffing in this episode until we can confirm whether or not one of us pulled this card, because if one of us just says end of battle phase, it is going to force some sort of reaction. And I guess it's going to be a game of chicken to see whether or not we think the other person believes it. And I can't wait to see how this plays out. And then we start to get to some of the TCG exclusives, the OCG imports, the Vendreds, the FAs, uh, Kaleido Chicks in here. I actually just learned though that Yellow Martin was actually from a side set. So this archetype is not actually as playable as I thought it was several sets ago. So that's kind of unfortunate. But Guska's a really big one in the rank four department. I think Gage and I would both like to have this. There's double Helix. We have a six spiral core, but I don't think it's good enough because we did not pull nearly what we needed. But that's going to be it. We have to open our tournament pack. I don't know if there's anything too spectacular we can get out of here. I, you know, I actually take that back. Another Lost Wind is nice because I think I only pulled one copy of this, so I'll take it. Also, Scapegoat. See, this is one of our first opportunities to actually pull Scapegoat. And with Link Summoning, Scapegoat can be a very, very scary card. I don't know if I'll play this this episode, but this is a good thing to have on hand. So let's go ahead and crack open 24 packs of Circuit Break. I am looking for a lot of stuff from Circuit Break here today. I'm looking for a whole bunch of things in the rare slot, surprisingly, actually. But also things like Borlo Dragon? Not quite bad, dude. Evenly matched? Oh. They'll be pretty good. So we'll see what we can grab from our box of circuit break here. Uh, let's see if we get lucky. Really, Destrudo's the big boy I'm looking for today. One off the bat, too. I'll take it. Also, the crawlers, we are looking for those. Maybe something we can do with those bad boys there. But the Strudo's the big thing. One in the opening pack. I'm 100% going to take that. And an ultra rare Thunder Ogre, too. These Gokis, they're okay. They're okay at best. I only got one Suprex last set, which kind of really sucks. But uh, maybe we can bounce back, get some cool stuff here. Metaverse is an incredible card, dude. That's another great pickup. Definitely something I want for the future. And and now might be something we can use later down the line with Mystic Mind. Fucking menacing, bro. That combo is so bad. Wow, uh, that's pretty good for Altergeist there. We got the protocol in the last pack too, and then we have Soliloquist. That's a good one. A couple Kunkiri's already coming in as well. Ah, Ultra Rare Trickstar Black Cat. Dude, nothing there on that one there. Nothing to talk about with that bad boy. And then Vendred cards, dude. Nobody ever played him. Nobody ever will. Oh, a Baguska. That's a great rank four to have, actually. I think it's really difficult for us to out in our series. Really, really incredible rank four. I have no doubt Alex is gonna be able to get one one of those for himself as well. All right, you guys, 24 packs of circuit break. I just want to get cracking. I really hope we can get some cool stuff in here. The first pack, it's a lot of crawler stuff. Uh, maybe I should look into this archetype, to be honest. Maybe it's slow enough and has some sort of edge against paleo. I don't know. We're going through the packs, and honestly, there hasn't been much to speak of uh, as of yet. We just really are getting everything in the common slot, some rares, some super rares, but nothing too spectacular. This is a little bit concerning. Damn, third of the way through and still not nothing. I haven't even gotten anything above a super rare yet, so that's pretty depressing. Oh my god, bro. Evenly met. That's a huge pickup, dude. Oh, fuck, man. Evenly matched, bro. Just gonna absolutely shred any board that Alex sets up, bro. He better be scared when he's playing back row, dude. This is gonna fuck him up. Unfortunately, not as reliable, only at one, but still, that's an incredible pickup, dude. It probably was the best secret rare of the set and still is an incredible secret rare today. Oh, a mellow seat. Wow, Geist are coming together, too, actually. I've ended up getting a lot of really good Geist cards, so there's definitely something to think about there, because mellow seat is a hell of a card, too. I'd like to get more mellow seek though because it is what makes the deck go round oh my god dude marionetta as well bro holy shit oh dz is screaming right now dude no doubt i might actually play these altar geists that's so weird another soliloquist cannot complain Okay, there we go. Pack number, what is this? 11, 10? I don't even know anymore, but Destrudo in the pack. Finally, we get something that is actually very, very strong. Again, because I have Yazzie, there is a lot of potential to play this card. Yazzie's just a house, and so that may be worth it just for that alone. Free special summon, it does cost half our life points, so that's a little bit concerning, but very good pull. Okay, second Destrudo. Uh, Destrudo's going to be at three, at least for several episodes, because it will eventually make its way to the ban list, which since we're playing traditional means, we're only gonna have access to one copy of it. However, maybe we can make use of this while we can. We'll have to look into it. Oh, I would be so excited if I actually had a good spiral core. There's the double helix. I don't have a master plan. I didn't even pull copies of the field spells, so there's no way we can play this. This card is so awesome, but just not going to make its way into the progression series. How sad. Right, I've only gotten the one Destrudo so far, and I got four packs left. One Destrudo is fine to be able to do what I want to do, but I'm also looking for, like I said, crawler cards. I've yet to get the crawler link monster which would be 
that's pretty fucking good, bro. A second Marionetter and Destrudo again. I'll take it 100%. So far, this is looking absolutely obscene, but I still haven't gotten the Crawler Link monster here, the one that has two downward pointing errors. If I want to do anything with those bad boys, I feel like that card's important. What the fuck, bro? And Samurai Destroyer! Another rare that I really, really want to do to level 7 Synchro. This is all coming together perfectly, dude. Prisma Banshee as well, man. Oh my god. Dendrite? I think that might be the first Dendrite I've gotten, surprisingly. And then that's my third protocol. Very good so far, dude. The only Alter Geist card I think I'm missing that I did didn't get yet. I don't even know if it's in the set. Is the the reborn one, right? That one's pretty good, huh? Last two packs here. Anything good? A Magna Rocket Dragon? Sure. And then the last pack here. Anything killer? Quiet Life. Card may be reflecting a quiet life, but this is indeed a resounding pull here. I'm very happy with everything we got. Excited to get building. Let's see what we can do. Wow, this is just getting depressing. I mean, I, I haven't gotten anything except the Strudo we're talking about yet. I know we tend to have sets like that at times, but oh boy. Oh, okay. There's an Ultra Ray. And a third Destrudo, I guess, is pretty cool. It's Goki Thunder Ogre, though. We're not playing Goki, so this is a bit of a dud. I will say, though, I think this is maybe the second Ultra Rare I've gotten in 18 packs. No secrets, nothing else so we'll see six packs left maybe we can get an evenly matched in the close all right you guys only a few packs left it's been a rather lackluster opening i would say we got the play set of destrudo which i think is definitely the highlight because that's at least usable but aside from just getting metaphys cards crawler cards you know fa cards haven't really had that much action so let's hope for the best in the last three flip them up nope nothing there amano's cool but i don't think we're really going to be able to play it next pack uh okay metaverse is actually the first time we're seeing this so I'm happy we at least have one of this. This could be relevant if Mystic Mind becomes relevant much later on in the series, or if we're playing any field spell deck for that matter. Mistar Boy too. I think this is only my second Mistar Boy actually, and so I mean the fact that I don't have a playset, maybe Gage could actually not pull it. That'd be pretty good, but it's a common. Let's be honest. All right, last pack. Can we at least close on a secret? At this point, if it's evenly matched, fantastic. But I'll take any secret at this point because I just want something just to have a close. And it's Goki fucking Thunder Ogre. Okay, well, uh, that's gonna do it for the opening. Not really too much to say. We got some Destrudos, and that might be it. Let's get to deck building. I have a ton of work to do after last time. All right, similar to what you ended up expecting, I'm sure, but also pretty different here. We're playing Crawlers mixed with Paleo again. The Paleos, I feel like, have been working outstanding recently. We used to pair it up with the Frog Package, but I wanted to try something different today with the release of some new level twos. Had to throw it back to the inception of this series when Alex and I first dueled with sealed-only booster packs way back in the day for one of his older series. I ended up playing Crawlers as my deck of choice. And the Crawlers, oh, they crushed him, dude, and I can't wait to bring him flashbacks of that time with this time a way updated, upgraded, card pull. Destrudo is absolutely disgusting with these level 2 monsters here being able to pair super easily to go into any of our level 7s. We do have a banned card in the form of Ancient Fairy Dragon, Black Rose to wipe the field, and then newly picked Samurai Destroyer which is a Ally of Justice Catastrophe or an Armades, I think it is. Armades actually, if it's destroyed by a card effect much like these crawlers, it's gonna float into itself. This guy can special summon any machine. It can also target itself here, which is stupid. And then the crawlers, when they're destroyed by an opponent's card effect specifically, they can special summon two crawlers from the deck with different different names in face down defense position. Ended up playing just a few bundles here. Only pulled two spine, which I think is the best here. 2100, pretty much a man eater bug. Axon pops a spell or trap. Receptor searches and then Dendrite dumps any monster, which is great because we can dump a card like Snow or Destrudo itself. We did pull a Dragon Ravine in an Astral Pack here, so pretty hot that we can pick it up a Terraforming. Pop it off an Ancient Fairy Dragon, replace it with the Chicken Game or the in-theme spell card, the World Legacy in Shadow, which all it does is really special summon one of these level twos from hand. Gives us another extender or level two with work to work with to make uh, Animal Karis here. Last episode, we were able to win sorely on the uh, merits of the Paleozoics themselves. Then again, Alex was playing Blackwing, which probably wasn't a good choice. I have no doubt he'll try to find a different strategy today. But uh, that proves to us that it's a pretty sound strategy on its own. So I decided to toy with the engine itself a little bit, and Crawlers was the next best choice here. Still want to rock the Luna and the Snow engine here, because again, it does work with Dendrite, but also we need an out to Masterpiece just in case he does want to double back on like Dynamist or something like that. Which, speaking of which, in the uh, side deck here, still respecting the Dynamist as I think it is a respectable choice here. This is a another deck that we can actually revisit Secret Village of the Spellcasters, and now that we have Destrudo, we have a more reliable way to get to it with Ancient Fairy Dragon. Pair that with the Shining Elf, it could just be a wrap. New Link Monsters in the form of Mistar Boy. I didn't get the good Crawler uh, Link Monster, but this Crawler, when it's destroyed by battle or by card effect, it summons from Graveyard, so I decided any Crawler Link Monster is better than none. This deck, oh my god, it looks fucking incredible. I don't know how we can lose with this today. Feeling really, really confident with it, and I think confidence is key when it comes to beating the anime protagonist 
Simo. Let's see what he's come up with today. Hopefully it's something different than Black Wings, bro. Okay, so I gotta be honest with you guys. I'm not sure if I have the brain capacity to be able to pilot this deck effectively, but there are a lot of really cool things that DDD can actually do, and there's some cards that line up very well with this particular matchup. So I'm gonna give it a shot. I actually have most of the pieces, and we're not playing this with the structure deck, obviously, because we're not doing structure decks this season, but DDD was actually playable for a very short window of time when a lot of these cards were out. So this is the deck we're bringing to today's duel. I'm really excited. So first up, two copies of DD Burfamet. We can just target another DD monster and make its level from one to eight. This allows us to go in tandem with our other level eights to go into the duo Don King Kali Yuga, which will just obliterate Gage if we actually resolve it. So that's kind of our main win condition. We have two copies of Necro Slime. We can banish this and other monsters to fusion summon a DDD fusion. So it's just kind of like a banishing fusion sort of effect, but it's pretty good because we can get a lot of value off of it. Two DD Savant Galilei. This is a card that wasn't really played, but it's interesting for our deck because its monster effect is during either player's turn. So it's a quick effect. We can discard it, target a DD or dark contract card we control and return it to our hand. So this allows us to dodge cards like Dynomicious or Canadia or different things like that by bouncing the cards back to hand. In the instance of it being a dark contract, we can actually then reuse it next turn. So yes, we take a minus and we kind of break even if it's a contract, but there's some cool things we can do with this and also having the name. Also, the pendulum skill may come up, so we'll see. Three Savant Kepler. This is probably one of the heart and souls of the deck. Its monster effect on normal or special summon allows you to activate one of its effects. The one that matters the most is to add a dark contract card from deck to hand. That allows us to get dark contract with the gate, which then allows us to search another card. So Kepler is a plus two, and since it's a continuous rota, we want to get this online as quickly as possible. It can also bounce a DD card uh, to our hand, similar to Galilei, but we just want this for the search primarily. Two Savant Thomas. Savant Thomas is good because we can target a DDD card in the Pendulum Zone with its monster effect, destroy it, and then special summon a level 8 DDD monster from our deck. So Savant Thomas in tandem with a monster we can scale could potentially represent a rank 8 play into DDD Duo Gone King Kali Yuga. So that's what this is in here for. It's also like a sizable body. It's fine. We have three Swirl Slime. Swirl Slime is one of the best cards in the deck. We can use it and another card to fusion summon a DDD fusion, and then we can also banish it from the graveyard to special a DD monster from our hand. So a lot of value here. We really want to see this in the opener. And then two copies of DDD Oblivion King Abyss Ragnarok. We only got two of this, unfortunately, but this is just a fantastic card. If it's in the pendulum scale, if we special summon a DD monster, we can actually target a DD monster in grave and special summon it as well. So we actually get to plus there. And then its monster effect is if it's normal or special summon, we can target a DD monster in grave to special summon. Again, this could potentially lead to some rank eight plays, but it just allows us to build a very big board presence, which is what we are trying to do. It can also just banish other monsters on the field, which is pretty sweet as well. We have two Masterpiece. Of course, we're still playing Masterpiece. It is still at three copies somehow. Don't know how that's the case, but because we're playing so many continuous spells and traps, and not to mention we can search them thanks to Kepler, that's going to make this card very live very quickly, and the Max C rounding out the monster lineup. For the spells, one Allure, our whole deck is dark, so we don't really care. We just want to turbo through our deck. Three Dark Contract with the Gate. During our main phase, we can add a DD monster from our deck to our hand, and we take a thousand damage during each standby phase this is up. So this is a little bit bad. It does put us on a clock, but there are ways to circumvent this. And then we also have one copy of Dark Contract with the Swamp King. I'm actually kind of shocked I only pulled one of this because it's a common, but this allows us to fusion summon monsters by using monsters from either the hand, field, or graveyard. And that allows us just to put up some big threats very quickly. Really happy to have this card in here. Then just a bunch of staples. Dark Cool, Foolish Burials back in the mix because we do have some graveyard synergistic cards. Heavy Storm, Mystical Space Typhoon. One for one's fantastic for getting into Kepler without using our normal summon. Pot of Greed, Regeki and of course, Snatch Steel. And this is where we get into the spice, ladies and gentlemen. So first up is Dark Contract with Errors. This is a trap that a lot of people may not be familiar with with the DDD deck. Once per turn, if you control a DD monster, you can negate all trap card effects on the field other than this cards for the rest of the turn, even if this card leaves the field. And then once per turn during standby phase, you take a thousand damage. So effectively, as long as I can keep any monster on the field, because DD and DDD both count as DD monsters, then I am going Going to keep Gage off of all of his trap cards. Biggest problem is he is playing Kaiju, so he can like Kaiju over them, so that could be problematic. But I think having a built in trap stun that's continuous and I can use it at will is just disgusting. We also have two Dark Contract with the Witch. Uh, as a quick effect, we can send a DD or Dark Contract from our hand to the grave, target a card on the field, destroy it. So not only is this removal, but we can also chain it in response to trap activation, so that way Gage is not able to then get Paleozoic activations going. I think that is very very key for that interaction. And also during the opponent's turn, all 
of our fiend monsters gain a thousand attack and so that can make some of these monsters huge i mean that puts oblivion king to 3200 that's just massive we also have eradicator epidemic virus this is essentially the third copy of errors but i think eradicator is a little bit better because it actually removes the cards out of gage's hand we tribute a dark with 2500 or more attack and declare spell or trap we're obviously going to call trap and it basically just crush cards him for traps we have so many easy ways to get monsters with over 2500 on the field so this is going to be nasty if we can resolve it two fiendish chain this is to stop fairy tale luna that that stupid lock is so irritating so i need something to slow that down and then one torrential tribute rounding out the main deck the extra deck we have two ddd oracle king to arc we can fusion this with swirl slime or with dark contract with the swamp and any effect that would inflict damage to us makes us gain the life points instead so any of these contracts that would normally make us lose life points will actually gain them 2800 attack it's perfect candidate for eradicator just a fantastic card all around you should probably see this a lot in this episode to ddd wave oblivion king caesar ragnarok these names are just absolutely insane this card is a very neat effect on top of being 3200 attack if you attack a monster you can like target another monster and equip it to him and so it's sort of removal he also gains the attack which is pretty nice and you can also just bounce cards back to hand as well to get some use out of them very interesting card very situational card so i don't expect to be going for this unless i'm like trying to game him we have some synchros but honestly i'm not really playing any tuners apart from distrudo i was messing around with plague spreader but it just kind of was a bit bricky at times leo as well as the ddd gus king high alexander were nice to be able to sync with any of the level eights because these are level tens but it didn't really seem like that came up all that often so i decided to ultimately cut it we also have the yazi because we're side decking the distrudos i don't like distrudo in this deck because we are going to be paying life points for the dark contracts and while yazi can't be targeted which is good against paleo gage is playing kaiju so it doesn't really matter anyway and then the extra deck's just full of a bunch of xyz we have karen gorgon ddd duo don king kali yuga just wins us the game if we summon this it's harpy's feather duster we can get value off of it it's 3500 attack it also cold waves him in the process so it basically just auto wins if we can resolve it we have ddd marksman king tell as well as ddd wave king caesar and high king caesar these are just situational xyz that we can summon with the burfamet just since we can modulate the levels of our monsters if these come up we'll talk about them we've also got gaga Ga Ga cowboy guy dragon as well as sylvan princess fight we're playing a fair bit of level one so this is something that i can actually do with them and if we mill a spell off of her effect we just get to plus so that seems pretty nice for the side deck two dd croat seems pretty good against this paleo deck we also have denko seca if we lead with this we might just be able to win then and there two distrudo again probably not going to play it but i'll evaluate two gamma seal in case he's on something different entirely jinzo just seems like a great card against paleo but the problem is he's playing kaiju so i want to have this in the side but i don't know if i'm going to play it cold wave could come in because being able to ice him down for a turn so that way we can set up duo don king kali yuga and just wipe his board may be worth it so i might side this in two twin twister for more removal three back to the front i really like this because we play a lot of very large monsters and so being able to bring them back possibly trigger some effects i think this could be very good the biggest problem is it's a trap so uh, we'll see and then a third dark contract with errors if he 100 is on paleo which let's be honest he probably will be i'll side this in and we'll see how it goes guys i am super excited to play this deck a little bit nervous because honestly i'm not very well versed in this so we'll see how it goes but maybe dark contract with errors will carry us so ladies and gentlemen it's time to duel Gage, very excited to see how this episode is going to pan out. I think there's some interesting things that could go about. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much, but how, how are you feeling, buddy? How are you feeling? I'm feeling extremely confident, bro. And that means you should be scared, dude. I feel like even with the second set of links in, I feel like we're already starting to see new strategies kind of develop. Again, yeah. the sets just keep coming where like low rarity stuff like actually matters and archetypes come out and things just, they, they just change. I'm excited to see what you've brewed up today, dude. I, I, I was saying, I hope you brought those wings back again, oh, bro. I bet, I bet. I, I said this to you off camera, but you had way more to lose than I did, even though I ended up losing the last one. Because if you lost, the audience was never going to let you live that one nope. down <laughs> no sir dude could you imagine even if you didn't like win but you hit me with that triple kalut last yep. game bro that Ooh, might have been yeah, enough flashbacks. that might have been enough but <laughs> we'll see we'll see all right buddy let's go ahead and get into it uh good luck i i'm curious to see what you brought because there's some interesting strategies that can uh come out this episode <laughs> oh yeah okay cool i did it you got me. Uh, your call, buddy. Your call. All right, dude. Well, I think it's a pretty easy choice, though. I'm going to go first. Okay. I think that's pretty obvious. Good luck, and let's see what you can do. Good luck, Duelist. You're going to need it. I will go standby 
into my main phase. And while you're going into that main phase, let's go ahead and shout out our patron. It is Tanner McDaniel. Thank you so much for the support. What you got, buddy? What you got? You're uh, no, right, no more 60 card. No more 60 card. No more 60 card. That wasn't last episode either. I'm going to start off with Terra. Okay. Me. This is slightly different, I think. I don't think you play any field it's spells a in the bit. old. Unless you're playing like Wetlands or some shit. <laughs> All right. Terraforming. I'm going to pick up. Haven't seen him in a minute. Chicken Haven't game. seen Chicken Game in a while. This is still a card, sure. All right, uh, I'm going to start my turn with my summon. Let's go normal summon Luna again. She's there. All right, so same deck, it seems. Yep, Luna trigger. Yep. All right, very cool. Uh, off of Luna, I'm just going to pick up another copy of Luna. Sounds good. I will activate Dragon Ravine. Ooh, Okay. That's cool. That's fine. Love to hear. I'm going to activate Dragon Ravine. I'm going to pitch Fairy Tail Snap. Sure. That's a good pitch. I'm going to dump Alex. This is a new card. I Oh, I can't believe I hope you said something about this bad boy. I'm going to dump Destrudo. The there Lost he Dragons is. Version. I did say something about Destrudo because this is maybe Dude. one of the best cards in the set, if I'm being honest. Mm, card is absolutely insane, bro. It's so cracked. I am going to sack off the Dragon's Ravine for a chicken game. Sure. I'm going to pay the 1,000 for chicken game. I'm going to draw one of my cards. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. Uh, I'm going to activate Destrudo. Okay. And I'm going to pay half of my life points. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. I promise you, though, it's worth it, dude. This card's so good. So good. I am going to Synchro Summon here. Yep. Destrudo goes to the bottom and of the Destrudo deck. That's something that a lot of people forget. I'm going to Special Summon Ancient Fairy. Dragon. Oh, no, not this. <laughs> I knew you were going to start doing this shit. Oh, so God. good, bro. So good. I'm going to Ancient uh, Fairy Dragon pop the chicken. Game, yep. And I'm going to gain back a thousand of my life. Summon. Everything's fine everything's fine oh you love to hear man i'm going to snatch up my last field spell in my deck world legacy in shadow you are on this shit oh my yeah, god i, I had <laughs> as soon as i saw the crawlers people who don't know gage and i did a video what was it like two years ago or something yeah, something like that and man. you Long were time playing ago, fucking crawlers and i remembered that and i was like there's no way he's gonna go crawler this episode is he and that all but confirms it so okay that is what i decided oh, to do bro i had to fuck man off okay so your hand is world legacy in shadow luna correct yeah, yeah, those are the two cards you know I have. Correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know the other two. Yes. Okay, continue. All right, I'm going to activate Ancient Fairy Dragon. I'm going to special summon Fairy Tail Luna from here. Sure. From there, I will just set two cards. Alex, it's your turn, bro. Great. Uh, I get to play around a bunch of cards that I don't remember what they do. Fantastic. I will draw. No doubt. And you stand by fate. Nope, you're good. Okay. Go ahead and go to main. We're going to main one. So I know you have the World Legacy in Shadow in hand, because obviously you can't. It's a field spell right? Yes, because you got off Ancient Fairy. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Oh, this is weird. Okay, Gage, uh, I'm actually up to something new myself over here, as a matter of fact. Oh, I, I'd hope so, bro. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got for me, dude? Uh, this is probably going to give it away, so I am down. I am going to start my turn by activating Dark Contract with the Gate. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, I'm going to say it. Interesting choice, bro. Okay. <laughs> Interesting choice. Are you going to activate that gate? I would like to add a DD so, monster from deck to hand. I'll hit it with the Paleozoic Oil. Well, you know, it was destined to not happen, I guess. All right. So spell and trap removal. Pretty, it's pretty good. good. It's pretty good. You're on the pay. Okay. So now I'm even more confused. You're still playing paleo with this as well. Uh, that's good. Uh, the crawlers are level twos. I know you oh, might not they remember are that. level twos. They uh, are pretty okay. perfect. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that kind of foils things, but I don't know how much it exactly does. All right. For my next trick, I am going to activate DD Swirl Slime. Oh, yo, bro. I, I gotta admit, dude, as many times as I've seen people play this deck, I don't know what the fuck these cards so do, the, so I gotta read So them. the DD Swirl Slime allows me to fusion summon from hand. So I'm going to give up okay. my Savant Kepler that was in my hand and conduct a fusion okay. summon if you'll allow it. I'll allow it. Go okay. ahead. Okay, so we're gonna bring out DDD Oracle King to Arc. And if you don't remember this, it's 2800, which is actually pretty big. And anytime I would take infect damage, I actually gain that much life points instead. Okay. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Okay, then uh, I really don't like you having this ancient fairy out. I'm going to set two cards and then I'm going to tribute the Ark and my trap for Masterpiece, the Draco Slay King. <laughs> 
God damn, bro. Oh, I'm like, what's it? Oh, bro, I could have loot. Okay, well, wait, wait. I, you gotta. Do you have a second one for Luna? Would you have negated it if I would have Luna? I have another arc, yeah. So you couldn't have okay, stopped okay. it. Okay, okay. So yeah. it didn't matter. But fucking, all right, masterpiece. <laughs> yep. They are continuous, buddy. They are continuous. Okay. Yep. Uh, we'll go to battle. Let's hit into your Luna. I, I, yeah, I have to let it go. All right, so I'm going to take 11, 5. You will. Or 11? Just 11, yeah. These 50s actually cancel out here. Okay. All right. Unfortunate. Yeah, unfortunate. And then uh, second main, I've got a couple continuous cards I can work with here. I'll go ahead. We'll banish one. Let's go ahead and take care of the Ancient Fairy. I don't want that sticking around. That's fine. And we'll pass. Go ahead, buddy. All right. During the end phase, uh, I'll activate Phantom Knights of Lost Bamboo. This is going to give you your level two. Yes, and I'm going to chain all your Uh, Am I fine with that? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. All right, cool. So we'll move him up. Knighties back. Sounds good. All right. Draw for turn. I know you have Stand the by. World Legacy in Shadow. Yes. This masterpiece is protected from... Monsters and traps. traps. It sure is. You know, I wasn't expecting this deck just to be another shell for Masterpiece, but you know, if it happens to play out that way, I'm not going to yep. complain. <laughs> it just, it, it happens sometimes. That's just how it yep. is. I'll slap these two on top of each other. Extra deck monster zone, baby. Mm -hmm. Back to it. And I'll make Opabinia. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is fine. I can't do anything against the Opabinia with Masterpiece specifically, right. so I'll let you get your search. I'm going to get that Opabinia search. Kip. Wow, nothing feels good against this <laughs> thing, dude. I can't. It's like weird. It's like nothing works against it. Um, I'll pick up a, uh, I'll pick up an Oleonides here. That seems fine. Sure. Yeah. So nothing in response there. We're good still? You're good. All right, cool. Give me a minute. All good. Isn't this card so fun, Gay? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> no, it's not, bro. Um, uh, uh. Yeah, I, I, there's nothing I can do about it. Go ahead, your turn. All right, we'll draw. Uh, ooh, uh, can we do something about that? I think we can, actually. Uh, I'm going to activate Foolish Burial. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, we're going to dump a copy of Necro Slime to the graveyard. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use this copy of Necro Slime. This is basically Swirl Slime, except I have to banish cards from my graveyard to be able to fusion summon. Sure. So I'm going to get a few of these out of the grave here, and we're going to go for a, another copy of... Of the arc. Yep. Ooh. The arc is on the field. Okay. Let's go to battle. Let's hit in. All right. On attack declaration. Well, not on attack declaration. And and, and start step a battle phase, you know, typical thought process. Okay. Um, I'm going to activate Paleozoic Oil Nighties from my hand here, and I'm going to target your face down. Targeting my face down. This will give you a Paleo, but what are you up to? I know you have the spell in hand. You know what? That's fine. Uh, you're going to chain a Paleo? I am. I'm going to chain this Oil Nighties in my grave. Okay. Too. Sure. Dope. Anything else? I'll summon this. Uh, you popped my Eradicator Epidemic Virus. That's a pretty fucking good card, bro. That's a really good card. It is a good really card. good card. I was trying to weigh the options here, but we'll see if I get punished for it. All right, still in the battle phase then. I will activate a Morella from my hand as well, to and I'll chain the Oleonides. Sure. If that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. So we'll get the other Oleonides back here. To dump with Morella. I will dump a Canadia here. Canadia gets dumped. I know you have that one card in hand. Okay, all good? All good. Okay, uh, so then... I will proceed to what I was doing before, and I will hit the arc into Opabinia. Okay, I will activate snow in the graveyard sure. here. Sure, I figured that was coming. Banishing one, two, three, four, five, six, and I will get rid of the Canadian. Gotta get rid of, like, the whole first. graveyard here to do this. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Not totally ideal, but it is what it is. I'll summon the snow, and then I'll snow book the, the arc yep. here. The arc is going to down, and then <laughs> I will then attack Masterpiece into Opavinia. That one is going to stick. Yep, that's fine. Because there's nothing you can do about that. You can't snow Masterpiece. Second main, I think you want to want to do here. So you have two Paleos, you have the snow. Your graveyard does have a paleo in it which is good i know you have the spell in hand still spell doesn't really do much so i honestly think i'm just gonna oh what would you have to draw you have to draw something really good to get out of this i'm just gonna pass go ahead okay cool i will draw for turn yep. stand by main mm -hmm. times like this i really wish i had a second opabinia <laughs> i was like oh, you only God, have one opabinia so i'm i'm a little bit okay with that <laughs> would have been a game changer would have been, been yeah that would have done a lot so thankfully progression series coming in clutch there we got a game on our hands though. we got um, a game we do we do it's not a bad one here it says 2000 defense 2000 defense yeah all right bro well, i'm gonna teach you to respect your zones from now on i'm gonna banish paleozoic oil nighties for oh, imduck the, the world chalice dragon yep and then imduck is going to get him in there 
<laughs> we need to shut up with you this brother. Really stop. Puns, that, was awful. <laughs> that was awful. That was awful. Hold on, sir. Go ahead and uh, what? I might have something. Oh, you have your masterpiece. I have masterpiece. Yeah, yeah that's a respectable choice. <sighs> yeah, Imduck. That's the first official Link summon of the progression series, right there. You know what? It actually is. I didn't actually. Think I didn't think about it'd be that. Imduck of all things, but <laughs> me neither, bro. Are. Okay. So here's the question: You're Imducking this. Do I care? Kind of because it's like a big threat. You can get rid of that. Yeah, I'm really getting punished here because this would be a non-issue if I didn't summon in that zone. I don't think you can do anything. So I'll, before you do any of this, let's kill the Imduck off at start of the battle that, phase. That's unfortunately going to be okay. So I'm just going to go to my main phase too. Sure. I'm going to set a card and uh, 2,000 is too big, bro. It's big. It's your turn. 2,800 is a little bit bigger. I'll draw. We'll go to main one. Let's flip up the arc. And yep. I think we're just going to go straight to the battle phase. Sure. So let's go to arc into your Olenoids. I'll activate Canadian. Oh, it's going I'll back flip. down. <laughs> yep, it's going back down. And I'm going to chain Morella here. Uh, Yeah, that's fine. Dope. So now... All right, proceed. I think you only... Do you only have one Imduck? I really hope you do. <laughs> I don't think I can kill two Paleos, though, unfortunately, with what I've got going on. If you have another Imduck, I don't know if there's much I can do about it. Snow's just kind of chilling. I don't think Snow's really doing that much. You've got the spell still in hand. Okay, we'll just kill... Uh, we'll kill the Morella. I like Olenoids. We'll keep him around. That's fine. He'll get banned. Uh, second main, I'll just pass. Go ahead. All right, I will drop. Yep. Stand by. Main. See the Imduck. <sighs> I wish I had the second oh, one, dude. That would have been God. so righteous. Ooh, yeah, that would have been so wow. insane. Wow, okay. Set? Oh, man. We're having fun. We Go ahead. We are having fun. We are having fun. <laughs> uh, main one, I'm going to normal summon Savant Kepler. Yep. On normal summon, I can add a dark contract card to my hand, if you'll allow it. Yep. Uh, go for it. With it, we will grab dark contract with the gate. Is that what I want to grab? Yeah, we'll go for dark contract with the gate. That seems pretty good. <clears throat> uh, we're going to fire Dark Contract with the gate and attempt to use the effect to add. That's fine. Okay. And with that, we will grab ourselves a DDD Oblivion King Abyss Ragnarok. Yep. Very long name. Uh, we will flip summon to Ark to the field, and we're going to banish the Swirl Slime Engrave for the second effect to special summon a DDD monster from our hand. Go for and it. And we're going to bring out the Ragnarok that we just searched. Uh -huh. And we're going to use the effect of Ragnarok here. We are going to uh, tribute a DDD monster, so we're going to tribute this Kepler to banish a monster on the field. It does target. It <sighs> does do that. So I am going to go after so your So you snow. have to target the Yeah, because yep, Olenoids is smart. immune. Correct. Yep. We'll go to battle. Uh, we we will swing with Ragnarok. Start step of battle. I'll go through. You know, you're protected. You're protected. <laughs> <laughs> gotta do what I gotta do. I'll chain Canadia here. Yeah, sure. That's fine. All right. You're walling up. Walling up. Uh, we are walling up. We gotta do what we gotta do. Gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, second main. Anything else I want to do? Snow's out of the picture. I think we're just chilling. I'll pass. Go ahead, buddy. All right, bro. I'm gonna draw. Standby phase, main phase. Uh, set. <laughs> Come on, bro. This isn't fun. What's going on? Go your turn. Another threatening roar. <laughs> Stand by face. Take a thousand. Uh, I actually gain a thousand because I have to arc on the field. I gain the life. Wow. Oh dead. my God. The great? plays. Isn't bro? that broken? Oh. <laughs> Yo. Okay. Yep. I will use dark contract to search if you'll allow it. Yep. That's fine. All right. So let's go ahead and with this dark contract. What do I want to get? Oh man. So many options. So many options. I think. I think I'm just going to grab another Kepler. Sure. We'll normal summon the Kepler, uh, and we'll use yep. the effect to okay. get another Dark Contract. Mm -hmm. And with this one, we're going to grab Dark Contract with the Witch. This one's insane. This dude. one is a very, one. very strong card. Indeed. Yep. Indeed. Okay. Can't do anything with your current Paleos that are out. Uh, I think we'll just go to battle. <laughs> Take another turn, I, man. I, I, I knew you had another threatening roar. That's why oh, I got man. this. I could have like killed you if I got the a different contract, yeah. but I'm like, it's another threatening roar. I know it. All right. I don't have another paleo engrave this time, though. Dude. Thankfully, fresh out. thankfully, uh, I will just set a card. Could be anything. Could be anything. Could be literally, literally anything. anything. Uh, and I will just pass the turn. Go ahead, buddy. Draw. Stand by. Man. All good. Bro, why does your thing have to be unaffected? <laughs> No. As you can see, this deck can do things besides just summon Masterpiece, too. It sure can, dude. It sure can, yeah. All right, well, I'm going to activate Destrudo in a hand here. I'm going to pay half of my life. Wow. 
and I'm going to summon it leeching off of this Canadia. Okay. Uh, thinking if I want to do anything in response to that, I kind of do. What are you going to summon? What level seven synchro do you have? Oh, you have black rose. Fuck that. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. All right. Yeah, we're going to dark contract. We're going to send this Galilee and we'll get the Distrudo out of here. You got okay. It. All oh, right. Man, do. Oh, Rough game one, bro. Oh, Holy smokes. Wow. Jesus. <laughs> Alex, DDDs, bro. I thought this deck would never actually work because we didn't have the structure deck. And you know, like Curse right. Siegfried and stuff, like those cards are, yep. those are real cards, you know? So I didn't think yeah. like anything was possible. But <laughs> real real yeah, cards? I know, I know. I'm Dude, I, I gotta be honest. I, I underestimated Necro Slime and the Swirl Slime. Oh man, you are feeling goopy today, bro. They're good cards, dude. <laughs> oh, goopy. I'm as goopy as ever over here. And you haven't even seen some of the best parts of what this deck can do. So hopefully in the second game, you, you get haven't to see seen mine either. Over. I'll say you haven't seen mine either. You've just been seeing some Paleo no, action. I but uh, it looked like you played the exact same deck and played a world legacy card and didn't yeah, do anything. Yeah, else. I didn't even activate the world legacy card. So hopefully, no, we'll let it do some more work today. I'm gonna go first again. Hopefully, a better grip Sounds this time good. around. Would have made some good fodder for Dino Mischief. Good luck, buddy. Good luck, Duelist. How's your head looking? Shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't sound too good over there. I will set one, two, and I'll normal Luna and I'll trigger Luna. Sure. I will grab another Luna. Sounds good to me. Pretty humble looking board. Nice pass to you, dude. We'll go to draw. Anything standby. Nope, you're good. Okay. Uh, we'll go to the main phase one and activate Pot of Greed. Yeah, that's a fair card. Go ahead and draw your two. Yeah, very fair card if it actually lets me draw. There we go. Right, we'll draw two. That's interesting. All right. First things first, I want to clear the way a little bit. So I'm going to fire off a Twin Twister, pitching a copy of Galilee, targeting your back row. <sighs> See what yeah, you're working with back there, buddy. Of course you are, bro. Of course you are. So I'll chain Phantom Knights of Lost Van Brace. Okay. So the cool thing is when this goes, it's not treated as a trap card still. It's treated as a monster. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So after that, I think uh, I think that's going to resolve. That's fine. So sure. this is going to move up. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, you actually can't. Yeah, no, Cause I you... can't because have, you have to have a monster. You can target your Luna. <laughs> I mean, actually, yeah, I'm going to do that. All right, cool. Nice. Okay, sure. Yeah, it doesn't say opponent's monster. It says face up monster. Yep. And you can just bounce Luna, so it's not the end of the world. Okay, all right. it's all annoyed. Whatever. Uh, that actually, I guess, kind of matters. Let's see. Good eye, dude. Thanks for the tip, man. Appreciate you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. I'm, you know, we're just friendly game we've got going on here, right? <laughs> all right, uh, let's go ahead and bring out Savant Kepler, and we will use that effect if you'll allow Unfortunately, it. Savant Kepler is going to be okay. You can add. Okay, and I think we're going to want to grab our favorite contract, the Dark Contract with the Gate. Yes, that one. We'll go ahead and fire it off yep. and uh, use the effect to search again, assuming that's okay. That's going to be all right. Okay. Uh, Gage, I don't have the brain power to play this deck. <laughs> no, I agree. So many, there's just so many different plays you can do. It was even worse ridiculous. when you had the structure deck, too. That, do you remember the combo trees people used to make for it? Oh, like, my, oh God, my God, yeah, with Genghis and Siegfried, and uh, just, just it was nuts. Endless. It was crazy. And this is the simplified version. <laughs> I'm still having trouble. Jeez. Off of this contract, I actually think I'm going to grab a, another Kepler, as a matter of fact. Okay. Yeah. Kind of want to keep this cycle going a little bit here. Next up, we're going to Foolish Burial once wow. again. This may look familiar. Yes, that's good. Yep. We're going to dump the Necro Slime. Yep. And let's go ahead and use that Necro Slime. We're going to banish itself as well as the Galilee in the grave. And we're going to bring out a Dark. Yep. The Ark is back. The Ark is back indeed. I will proceed to battle and let's go ahead and hit over this Luna here. All right. Well, I'll activate the Luna and I will try to bounce this back. You do have another one. So if you uh, want to yep. send, you can. Uh, otherwise, they get bounced. Yeah, we'll dump. Okay. That's fine. Cool. So this is uh, minus 600. So it's 1250 to your 18, 28. So I'm going to take 28. 1550. Yep. Okay. Big amount. Sure. And then second main, I think I'll just set a card. I'm feeling pretty comfortable over here. I think I'll just pass on that. Go ahead, buddy. All right, bud. I'm going to draw for turn. Yep. Stand by main. I'll start the turn. Here you go, bud. You can have this lovely good Darla. Uh, what are you going to get rid of? My dark? Yes, dark. Sure. The arc is down. All right. All right. Well, we'll go with the trusty. I'll summon Luna and I'll trigger the effect. Sounds good. I think I want to torrential this. Okay. Just to clean up a little bit. That's going to be fine. I'll chain Luna and I'll target my Godarla. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's a quick effect. All right. That's fine. So this will go back to hand. You get your Luna back to hand and then these get wiped. Yep. And then I get to add off a Luna too. So I'll pick up that a- That is uh, correct. I'll pick up another Luna here. 
Sure. And then turn sure to get that lost yes. Van Brace in the grave as well. Let's go to grave or does it get banished? It does go to grave. Thrilling as a turn that was. Fortunately, that's my normal summon and everything. So it is now your yeah. turn, dude. Full clean. Oh work. my god, you have nothing else. Is your hand just like Lunas and Kaiju? Mm, I don't know, bro. <laughs> Go ahead and pay your thousand. Pay the a thousand. I will this pay time. the thousand. Yeah, this time I'm not going to be darking it back. I, I really wish I could. That would be fantastic. But I will be going to main phase one here. Yeah, that's fine. This is definitely one of the problems now because it's like I don't want to commit things to the board because you can just easily clean them up, and that is not fun. <laughs> I'm not even sure what outside your three to arcs if you have three what else you're doing anyways too so i was about to say you're assuming i have three yes okay well we were always starting by firing dark contract with the game yeah you know so, typical uh, play we'll go ahead and get a search yeah maybe this will help kaiju luna kaiju luna it's a hell of a lock, bro. Hell of a lock. Yeah, it's so gross. I think I've got, I think I've got something. All right, lay it on So me. with this contract, let's grab a Ragnarok. Okay. Then I also need to make sure that this Kepler goes to the extra deck. Yep. That's important. Then I think we're going to scale this Ragnarok. Okay. I'm going to normal summon Kepler. Whoops, we're going to normal summon okay, Kepler. I was like, okay, is that okay, okay, yes, normal Kepler. You can scale it, but I'm not going to. I'm going to use the effect to search. Sure, that's fine. With this, I'm going to grab Dark Contract with the Swamp King. Okay. Uh, so this one allows me to fusion summon, which is pretty cool. And so I think that's what we're going to do. Yeah, I'm down. So we're going to activate Swamp King. Yeah. We're going to banish... My two copies of Dark. Really sad to see him go. And I think we'll bring out a copy of DDD Wave Oblivion King Caesar oh, Ragnarok. Lord, what the fuck is this thing, bro? <laughs> He's just massive. Oh, okay. He's just massive. He's only a massive yeah. when you equip stuff, too. All right, that's fine. Correct. Uh, and I'm just going to hit you for 32. 32 is fine. It's a lot, but it's okay. It's a big smack. It's a big smack. Uh, I will go to second main. I will set one. And I think... I'm just going to hand it over to you, buddy. Go ahead and kaiju me. Sounds like a plan, bro. I'll drop. Stand by, man. Yep. And, uh, yep, that is what I'm going to do. Go ahead and take it. Okay, so this goes. I will take your Godarla. I misplayed again. I put that Oblivion King in the, uh, in the, the zone M-Duck for zone. M-Duck. The M-Duck zone, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll normal Luna. Trigger Luna. Sure. Uh, yep, get your search. All right, I'll pick up a snow to round off the engine now. Yep, so you've got everything in hand. Yep. Uh, and I will... I'm, like, trying to think how dead I am, bro, if I just end up, like, throwing this kaiju back in my hand. Uh, all right, I'm going to... Uh, I'm a Luna bounce back the kaiju. Yeah, uh, that's fine. So they both go back to your hand, buddy. Wonderful, bro. Exciting. Look at all those cards in my hand, dude. Uh, You're going to have to discard if you have nothing else here. I do have something, thank goodness. So I'll set a card there. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> go <laughs> yep that's a lot of cards. uh okay uh in the end phase then i will activate dark contract with the witch let's pitch this galilee and pop the back row that's gonna be fine but i'll chain a paleozoic here too i'll chain my oily nighties sure right. seems pretty good pull him out here you had one so yep. you're able to protect yourself a little bit it's the other oily nighties so he's gonna go there. oh okay. okay well i mean that could have mattered you could have popped any of my uh my sets here it so that's kind of scary we'll see though yeah. go ahead your turn all right, we'll see. All right, we will draw anything. You're gonna take two thousand. Good. Stay in my face, bro. Uh, I'm gonna take three thousand, actually. Oh, you, <laughs> dude, you do contracts. have three of those contracts, bro. Holy yeah. smokes, man. I have three. It's kind of scary. It's kind of scary. Uh, but we will go to main one here. Sure. Can we wrap this up? I feel like we should be able to, right? I feel like we should be able to. I don't know if we can. Okay, let's start by activating dark contract with the gate. Yep. So with the gate, I'm going to grab Ragnarok. Yep. I am going to use the effect of my contract. I'm going to Which pitch one? the Ragnarok. I'm going to pop your Olenoids. Oh, okay. That one. That's going to be fine. Yep. Okay, so that gets banished. I'm now going to use the effect of my Swamp King contract. Sure. I'm going to banish my Caesar and my Ragnarok for another copy of Caesar. <laughs> Bro, you hate to fucking see it. Oh my god. Yep. He's big. He's big. Uh, and then I all I have to do is, because I have not normal summoned yet, I am going to sacrifice for masterpiece. <laughs> ah, no! Oh. And that should do it unless you have like battle fader or something. No, no battle fader. Oh, uh, I thought I screwed oh, myself there. Bro, oh. man, wait, I 
got to let me read this shit. I just got to make sure I, I 100% lose. I mean, I don't know how you're protecting yourself here. But... I'm just sad, bro. How? Oh, yeah, I fucking lost to this shit. <laughs> Dude, I did, I did not even get to set one crawler monster this entire game. How many crawlers were you on? I've got like seven of them. I've got two of them in my hand right now. <laughs> but when you have to normal summon Luna for turns so you don't die, like, it's like... <laughs> What you can't do anything yeah, else. What right. am I fucking to do? Oh man, I think right. I lost. Yeah. No, understandable. That's yeah. so tragic, bro. Unfortunately, man, I got that D. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, I think you got it, bro. That's a wrap. That's unfortunate, wow. man. Wow. Oh Damn, bro. Oh, I came today. I was excited, dude. I thought this was a good list I had, bro. So what was your plan? So the plan is like the crawlers are all level two. And I reading them back, they're like not that incredible. The big one was that Dendrite is literally a foolish burial. So like the goal was sure. to like dump snow or Destrudo and then capitalize off of that by getting AFD or Black Rose. Or actually, this guy's fucking tough. I don't know if you read Samurai Destroyer here. Yeah, He's I saw insane. this card. This card's pretty good. Yeah, Samurai yeah. Destroyer is very good. So it was like the last match we played, the Paleo Zoics literally carried me like I didn't see a frog so I was like oh I can just splash whatever level 2 engine I want but looking back right. on it no frogs are objectively way better because you have to set these things up but also they have to be destroyed by a card effect while they're face up so it's like really really hindering I thought it would be fun Ooh. to kind of do a throwback back to like like I said like you thought of it too when we did the series before this series right I was like man right. how fun would that be to crush his face in again with that but nah dude I, I can't out masterpiece now. these DDDs bro man that the big fusion guys they're tough I'm telling you like they're they're actually not that bad. Like Masterpiece obviously is one of the reasons I want to play it because I get a bunch of face up continuous spells that actually do something, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them's a Rota, one of them's a Fusion, one of them just pops your cards. You didn't get to see the card that, that made me actually decide to play this deck. Dark Contract with Errors. This is permanent trap stun. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What is that? What so, rarity is this thing? This is a common. Oh. So at any point, if you flip up like a paleo or something, I can just like chain dark contract with errors. And then this way, yeah, sure. You might be able to still chain a paleo to get the summon, but it negates all of the actual trap effects you have up. So you don't get your, you know, Olenoids, you don't get your Dynamicious, your Canadias, any of that nonsense. And this is searchable with Kepler. So I figured on top of the fact that the DDDs aren't actually like too bad. I did only have two uh, to arc, which really sucked. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> it was, it was pretty nice. It was something I was really hoping to see you saw i was playing even the eradicator just because uh the arc is 2800 and you can very easily summon dark in this deck sure so i figured dark plus eradicator i mean that basically just gonna wipe you and uh i figured it's worth the shot and uh even though i didn't get to see this card this deck actually didn't seem too bad to mm -hmm. be honest mm -hmm. yeah no i man dude these crawlers bro like i like i had these in my hand i'm like there's no opportunity that they were better than to summon Luna and, you know, not fucking die. So I just... I right, know, exactly. I, was... I think that's one of the biggest problems with Luna is that you're forced to, like, use her as your normal summon, mm -hmm. right? And so then if you have other cards that you're trying to get established, if you're ahead, then obviously, like, Luna's crazy and it'll just oh, take yeah. over the game. But when you're in a position where I'm able to establish multiple threats, is what it, which I was, I was trying to do with this Ragnarok initially, but I just uh, wasn't able to sequence it properly, then, yeah, then it just gets difficult to justify the Luna and you're just playing catch-up at that point. And so I was just trying to get multiple big bodies on the board that you'd have to deal with in some way. And uh, I mean, that was the game plan and it uh, it kind of worked, but I don't know. It'll be interesting to see next episode how this uh, this all goes because now that you know I've got this deck, I mean, we could change it up entirely. Extreme Forces next set yep. gauge. That set has a ton of really good link monsters that were imported from the OCG. And yep. so I, I really didn't want to spoil it for you, but like next episode's a good one too, Alex. Guess what I ended up pulling that I, I couldn't make work, but I think next episode, it might be a real problem for you what could Go you ahead, yes. pull there, there's like several archetypes i'm thinking of but i don't i don't know what okay so i ended up pulling two really cool things okay. i pulled double altergeist marionetter and a melusi and three protocol and two soliloquists so like a pretty solid altergeist core. wow okay yeah. But also, I got a singular evenly matched. Shit. You might have to look out for Shit. the evenly matched from now oh, on, bro. Oh, <laughs> no. I was expecting that you and I were going to bluff evenly match this whole game. Oh, because until one I of wish. us knew the other person had it, right? We could have just the whole time. It could have just been like, you'd be firing all your paleos to not lose them. I'd be doing stuff preemptively. Oh, evenly matched is so good. It's, it's so good. But do you know what's better? Card. What's better? Masterpiece is better, bro. Masterpiece is, <laughs> yeah, masterpiece is pretty uh, good. Dude, I still played the 
engine to respect it and just couldn't topple him, bro. He's too strong. I was curious if you were going to change it up thinking I might change it up completely and just not play Masterpiece. Like, even I just think he's too good for you not to play. That's right. the thing. Like, I, I agree. He's too good. And like, it, it's been proven too. Like the, like the last game, I'm pretty sure you won off the back of Masterpiece. Oh, 100%. Yeah, the DD and cards then, did like almost nothing in the last game except yeah, just like so, close the game out. But Masterpiece basically yep. led the charge. This game, however, Masterpiece was sitting in my hand because I saw you had the Godarla and the Luna and I'm like, well, can't summon this, so I'm going to win the mm -hmm. game automatically, and that was basically mm -hmm. what I did. Yep. Still ended up working out, though. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, obviously, you know, you might come a little bit more prepared for this deck next time, like having the even... So you weren't playing the evenly matched? It's in the side deck. It's in the side deck. Okay. I honestly, I didn't I didn't pull anything. I pulled maybe Nothing. two or three ultra rares in the entire set. Wow, and that's depressing. I got three Destrudo, which is pretty sick, but... Yep. I didn't want to play Destrudo in this deck because of all the life point paying on the contracts. I thought that that was just way too risky. I've got some cool things I can do with Destrudo, but I just didn't see the point. I was actually side decking it in case it may have come up, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's just like having to pay a thousand life points like every single standby phase sometimes. Sometimes, I mean, you saw I took 3k by myself right mm -hmm. there, you know, and that was pretty scary. So it is what it is. I think we'll see. I think there's Extreme Force is definitely going to open up the Link summoning plays for sure because there are just so oh, yeah. many strong Link monsters in that set. And that's, it's funny because that set if I remember historically, was very lackluster aside from the Link Monster specifically. Yeah, there was they... like Saryuja, Skaldred, yep. and Yo, and then everything else just like was like, eh. there's Mech Knight cards. You know, Mech Knights are actually pretty real too. Ooh, yeah, Mech but Knights like, in uh, our format are actually pretty decent, I would say. They're fucking, yeah, yeah like, gonna teach you to really respect those zones now, yeah, bro. Yeah, for real, for real. I can't believe <laughs> yeah. M-Duck almost actually was the decision maker at one point. Right? That's kind of scary. -duck. Zones matter, zones matter. So guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this episode of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression Series. We have to shout out our patrons. As always, a big shout Shouts to Shout1317, Moto, Sean Alling Jr., Cameron Smith, Angeoka, Tim Zuzur, X3, Ak, Iron Fang, Pony, Starkey, and Musa, Michael Dente, Part 2, Dan the Man, Hoban, Synchro Guy, Ole, Mystic Walk, Sylvia Wad, Stray Conic, Dolly Wap, Logan Thomas, Peter Gregory, Thomas Nelson, Cole T, Jordan Coons, Calvin, Iron Bladesman, Pure Ace, Jesse Wood, Turner, Gasm, Brother Paul, Chris Hood, Lumpy, <laughs> Nehru, Celeste, David Lou, Rockley, 325, Yusuf Ass 105, Lane Rogers, Chad God, Silent Age 216, I side in Grand Maju and Salad, Skyros, Dylan Hunter, Brett Harvey, John 2 Base, Apathy Astro, Brody Eastwood, Day Seer, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Give Me Speedroid or Give Me Death, MBT's hard like tc gaming matthew brady and edison format thank you so much for watching the video and we will see you next time